welcome to Full Frontal. I'm Samantha Bee, and I have to say, it's nice to see America finally returning to normal. For example, this week, a man was arrested outside of Kid Rock's big-ass honky-tonk and rock and roll steakhouse after he allegedly swung his full colostomy bag at Nashville police officers, apparently for the third night in a row. I mean, good for Nashville having a three strikes and you're out policy for swinging your own shit. I mean, that's not me. That's their tourism slogan. Honestly, I would spend all of our show talking about this man swinging his full colostomy bag at Kid Rock's big ass honky tonk and rock and roll steakhouse. I really would. But since I can't, here's something else that makes me smile. Republicans eating each other alive. Liz Cheney, the number three Republican in the House and the highest ranking woman in the party, seems to be on thin ice right now, with top Republicans questioning whether she's still going to be in a leadership position in a month. Senator Mitt Romney also voted for impeachment twice, with Utah Republicans giving him a rowdy reception. There's a person who, uh, who says what he thinks, and I don't hide the fact that I wasn't a fan of our last president's character issues. Mitt Romney just got booed like he gave up true love. And that's not the only come up and some Republicans are facing. A damning new report in the sex trafficking probe involving Republican Congressman Matt Gates. The Daily Beast says it has obtained a so-called confession letter from a Gates associate. Now, in this letter, Joel Greenberg claims that he and the Florida congressman paid for sex with multiple women, including a girl who was just 17 years old. A 17-year-old girl. Jesus Christ, that is so awful. Not to mention, you know, statutory rape. If you're not familiar with Matt Gates, are you actually watching our show or just leaving it on for your dog? I mean, like, that's cool. Either helps us. Matt Gates is one of Florida's representatives in Congress, and these new criminal allegations fit in with everything we already know about him. When Matt Gates was a new member of Congress, he earned a reputation very quickly of being a close ally of former President Donald Trump's. He also liked to show his colleagues photos and brag about sexual exploits that he had with women. He was the only vote in 2017 against a human trafficking law. Okay. Gates reportedly invented a point system for sexual conquests. One for a lobbyist, two for a staff member, three for another legislator, and six for a married legislator. The top conquest was said to be worth 150 points. A woman considered so unattainable she was worth 150 points. That woman? Mary Todd Lincoln. You know what they say, you gotta work like hell if you want that MTL. Gates' behavior is universally gross. One Florida Democrat who got an inappropriate voicemail from Gates said he was one of the most extreme examples of bro culture. And that is coming from a woman who holds office in Florida. Her last political opponent was probably just a man swinging a full colostomy bag at Kid Rock's big-ass honky-tonk and rock and roll steakhouse. Fortunately, Gates' most recent allegations actually seem to be sticking, largely thanks to former accomplice and current snitch, Joel Greenberg. Along with being indicted for sex trafficking last year, Greenberg was actually an upstanding local tax collector who also got indicted for crimes including stalking, identity theft, wire fraud, bribery, and using tax collector funds to buy himself cryptocurrency and Michael Jordan merchandise. The most f***ed up part? It was Michael Jordan baseball merchandise. So yeah, Joel Greenberg may be an enormous garbage pile, but at least he's a garbage pile full of receipts. The source tells CNN that Gates' indicted friend, Joel Greenberg, has been cooperating with the Fed since last year. Mr. Greenberg, we know, under investigation and under indictment himself, in attempting to curry favor and get a part, and he was attempting to put in documentary form a prior history with respect to what he was involved in, who he was involved with, his loyalty to the former president, etc. It went through, allegedly again, many drafts. Not only did Greenberg write a confession of what he did with Matt, he had screenshots of texts between him and Roger Stone talking about Gates and a pardon, and he left a trail of Venmo transactions detailing payments to young women. Not to mention the fact that every time he and Gates hung out, Greenberg wore a shirt that said, I'm with also guilty. Greenberg claims that he and Gates didn't know the girl they allegedly raped was underage and that when they found out, there was no further contact with her until after her 18th birthday. Oh, they waited to be legal predators. 
Hey, assholes, even if you claim you didn't know you were raping a minor, you still did. Of course, Matt Gates has completely denied the allegations against him, and almost all of his Republican colleagues are still keeping quiet about the story. And while QAnon followers claim they're all about fighting jet-setting wealthy pedophiles, apparently it doesn't apply to old Funko Pop Head because he and Q favorite Marjorie Taylor Greene have decided now is the perfect time to team up for a tour. With opening act, that man who swung his full colostomy bag at Kid Rock's big-ass honky-tonk at Rock and Roll Steakhouse. If the allegations that Matt Gates raped a minor are true, Matt Gates obviously deserves to go to prison. We have to remember that Gates has already been getting away with being publicly shitty for years. Matt Gates should resign, not just because of the newest allegations, but also because he's used his wealth and privilege to create a career revolving around hurting and humiliating women. In a fair world, Republicans would boo him the way they booed Mitt Romney. Okay, I'll be honest, I just wanted to see Romney boot again to cheer myself up. Believe it or not, we're almost halfway through this weird ass year. In fact, Sunday doesn't just mark the start of summer, it's also Father's Day. That special day when you spend 30 to $50 less than you did on your mom. Cause it's been 35 years and you still don't know who he is or what he likes. Speaking of dudes who've let us down over the years, Republicans are celebrating their fun in the sun by melting down over yet another bullshit made up controversy. Parents and common sense Americans are pushing back against the destructive far left critical race theory ideology that's infiltrating America's schools. This is parents across the country fight to keep critical race theory out of their children's classrooms. We all keep hearing about critical race theory. Yeah, you keep hearing about critical race theory because you keep talking about it, which means you hear about it more, which means you talk about it more because everything sucks. Outrage from stories like this are Fox's main source of income after ads for reverse mortgages and a life-size theme park of Noah's Ark, which is a real advertiser on Fox News. You know, I tried having my honeymoon there, but wouldn't you believe it? It rained like the whole time. While conservatives have recently appropriated critical race theory as a catch-all scare term for basically any conversation about teaching the history of race in America, the actual concept of it has been around for decades, and big surprise, it's really not scandalous at all. In short, critical race theory is an approach based on the idea that the history of white supremacy still has a very real and lasting impact on our society and institutions today. Critical race theory just says, let's pay attention to what has happened in this country and how what has happened in this country is continuing to create differential outcomes so we can become that country that we say we are. The current debate and conservative hand-wringing about critical race theory started in 2019 when the New York Times published the 1619 Project, which aimed to reframe the country's history by placing the consequences of slavery and the contributions of black Americans at the center of our national narrative. Unfortunately, that Pulitzer-winning journalism failed to take into account the feelings of one truly oppressed group, racist dildos. Highly paid diversity trainers systematically attack the unifying ideals of this country. They pit Americans against each other based on the color of their skin. It is a grotesque project. It is wrong. It is openly racist. Ron DeSantis writing, Florida's education system exists to create opportunity for our children. Critical race theory teaches kids to hate our country and to hate each other. You're emotionally abusing our children and mentally abusing them. You're demoralizing them by teaching them communist values. And as long as I'm standing here on this good ground earth of God, I will fight. Walk out. And I'm not, this is not the last of me you will see. I'm retired. I have nothing else better to do. I am here because this is important. I am here because this is an outrage. I am here because I am very bored. Help me fill my days. All this nonsensical outrage does have real consequences. Five Republican-led state legislatures have passed laws limiting discussion of race in schools, and conservatives in over a dozen other states are considering similar measures. But because Republicans don't actually give a shit what critical race theory is, much of the legislation against it is so vague that teaching the Civil War, Trail of Tears, and even civil rights could be considered a violation. In fact, it's so bad in Texas that educators are now only legally allowed to teach history from the About Us section on a bottle of hot sauce. 
Naturally, none of this has anything to really do with education, history, or saving the children. Scare tactic wedge issues like these have been a political strategy since the birth of democracy. Republicans have spent decades turning fear-based politics into an art form, from Richard Nixon's law and order platform to George H.W. Bush's Willie Horton ad to Ronald Reagan starting that whole you can get pregnant from a toilet seat thing. Today, Fox News, OAN, and Newsmax transform even the thinnest controversies into headline news to gin up ratings. Critics say the armed forces are being used as weapons in the far left's push for wokeness. Nothing seems to be immune from the left's cancel culture, including the Muppets. Cancel culture is coming for Disneyland. Prince Charming kisses Snow White and brings her back to life. They say the kisses without a consent. The British news site, The Guardian, drawing a lot of scorn for branding apple pie racist. I'll tell you this much right now. If they come after Cobbler, you're going to have to pry it from my cold, dead hands. <laughs> oh my God, you idiot. Cobbler is mostly viscous liquid. You couldn't grasp it in your hands even if you wanted to, f***ing moron. As stupid and wrong as Republican outrage culture is, it does real damage. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has specifically targeted critical race theory in his state's education system. Even worse, he's proposing that Florida replace critical race theory with amazing race theory. It's the theory that Phil Kogan isn't Jeff Probst. You've never seen them in the same place for a reason. It's because they film in different locations. Republicans don't just love these non-scandals, they need them, especially right now when the GOP is having a genuinely hard time demonizing Joe Biden. As President Biden approaches his 100th day in office, his approval ratings consistently show that he's winning over Americans who did not vote for him. The latest Gallup poll just taken this month has Biden's approval rating at 57 percent. Alexo Bell is a Donald Trump loyalist, but he's willing to put party affiliation aside to support President Joe Biden's $1.9 trillion COVID relief bill. Whether it be Biden or Trump, I think the country needs that stimulus. Monmouth just released new polling showing 64 percent support among the American people for the American Families Plan, 68 percent support for the inf infrastructure bill that he's already proposed. Turns out that's a good way to be popular, right? <laughs> I mean, sure, that works, but an even better way to be popular is just to be super hot. Trust me. Well, Biden has been criticized by the right on issues such as immigration. He's still a folksy straight white guy, so the GOP's usual tactics of using racism and misogyny to fire up their base don't work. I mean, seriously, you know it's hard for Republicans when the biggest scandal so far in Biden's administration is whether or not his dog Major is a good boy. Uh-oh, President Biden's dog, Major, is involved in another biting incident at the White House. What is it about Joe Biden and his dogs? Why can't he control them? This one Biden supporter noted, he nipped someone. If they weren't bit, you must acquit. That dog might better get his no. affairs in order. No. And, and, and prepare. It's a good boy. To, to meet dog I love Jesus. Rescue. If you're wondering the difference, dog Jesus is just like regular Jesus, but he shits everywhere if you give him people food. Look, Republicans don't care about controversies like critical race theory or trans athletes or any other story that gets wall-to-wall -wall Fox News coverage. They only care about making their mostly white base feel attacked and oppressed. That's all it is, fear. None of these people ever argue in good faith, and it's long past time we stop treating them like they do. Besides, we all know the only good faith is the one started by dog Jesus. Because as they say, the Lord is my shepherd, Mix. I shall not woof. This guy, whose name I'm never saying again, has been washed out of the White House, nixed from New York, and axed from Atlantic City. Oh yeah, look at that casino implode. Oh God, let's watch it again. Oh yeah, that's it right there. Work it, work it. <clears throat> Sorry. Anyways, this failed vodka vendor is now banished to Mar-a-Lago on the island of Palm Beach, Florida. But because I can't let shit go, I friggin' swam there in my clothes, which didn't get wet, to find out what this horrid hellhole is really like. It's like hmm, Beverly Hills in Florida. Yes, combining the charm of two of America's most normal places. It's a wonderland of beautiful homes, high-end shopping, and luxury cars. That's a nice car. 
There's they a Porsche over there. But many of these wealthy, wealthy, wealthy people just want to overcompensate in peace. And they're not happy about the arrival of one recent retiree, America's one-term dictator. Even the people that used to love him now kind of hate him. Oh, yeah. Because of the insurrection yeah. or just everything. Yep, kind of this whole, that whole thing that happened at, um, at the end. Yes, that whole thing that happened at the end. Awesome selfie, asshole. Palm Beach resident Larry Lamer authored a juicy history of Mar-a-Lago. Which is, please take this as a compliment, it's super bitchy. Yeah. As Lamer explains, the insurrection insulted the island's ideals. In terms of politics, they care only about two things, low taxes and a roaring stock market. Mm -hmm. Hey, Trump delivered, so they were Trump supporters. But the insurrection brought something totally different and they turned on it. So all the sort of the racism, the blowing out trans rights, children in cages, right. none of that stuff was bugging anybody? Are you kidding? No. No! <laughs> what bugs them is that the unsuccessful steak salesman has settled at Mar-a-Lago. That violates a 1993 agreement that no members could live there permanently. But of course... He's never made a rule in his life. Haha, <laughs> sex for you, Palm Beach. New York's not taking him back. And maybe his return is a kind of cosmic karma. As Larry tells it, Palm Beach society is partly to blame for the previous president. When you go to Mar-a-Lago, Trump goes around and comes up to your table and he says, isn't this the most fantastic steak you've ever had in your life? Mm -hmm. And you look down at it and it's kind of pathetic. It's nothing but gristle. But what mm -hmm. do you say to him? Donald, this is incredible. I'm so blessed to be here this evening. I've never in my life had such a steak. Oh, this is how we got here, Larry. Yeah. Because people were telling him that his burnt steak was good. Exactly. Then he became president. Exactly. And how did people in Palm Beach feel about that? Well, they were excited to share their point of view. I don't believe in opinions. Okay, maybe not. But across the drawbridge in less luxurious West Palm, residents opened up. I'm not happy to have him here. Everything about him is, is an embarrassment. We're full. We have enough. We're full of Florida men. Can I curse? You can say whatever you want. <laughs> I would call him an FF. Ah, oh, yes, that's Granny for f face. I'm a Republican. Finally, we found an actual Florida man. So are you excited to have Donald Trump as a full-time neighbor? Um, not really. I don't like him at all. Oh, okay. I believe he was the worst president ever. He's arrogant, self-centered. I did not like how he handled the pandemic and Black Lives Matter. I think he should be locked up. Wow. I never expected a unicorn to be wearing a tank top. <laughs> In Palm Beach, signs have started to mysteriously appear, warning residents about their new neighbor. Meanwhile, some residents have lawyered up, trying to get the town council to enforce the agreement. What do West Palm Beachers think of that? I don't care how white people on the island spend their money, you know, and if they want to sue him, it's great. Sue his ass. This ass has done plenty of suing himself. Lawsuits to turn Mar-a-Lago into a club, lawsuits to change flight paths, lawsuits over the height of a flag. He stuck it to this town. He took advantage of it. And he, and he learned the same things he did when he became president. It was, it was like a mini course in becoming president. The fake university founder is now claiming he's an employee of Mar-a-Lago, meaning he can live there, which is absurd. And he'll probably get away with it. Ugh, that poor flag. I don't think this lawsuit is going to force him out of Mar-a-Lago. I think this could generate a lot of aggravation and legal fees mm. and take years. But this is a blip on his screen. He gets away with everything. He didn't get away with trying to steal the election. There are now two criminal investigations that could pose his future freedom in jeopardy. And so I think the days of impunity are over. Hopefully so. This failed airline executive deserves to be hounded for the rest of his days in whatever way possible. And believe me, I'm happy to do my part. P.S. Your stakes suck, you FF. Like many Americans, I was excited last Thursday when President Biden announced new COVID vaccine mandates affecting about 100 million Americans. Why? Because I'd like life to return back to a normal that doesn't involve getting yelled at by psychopaths while I shop for fruit. Unfortunately, and you are not going to believe this, conservatives don't feel the same way. 
We begin with one of the most heinous displays we've ever seen from a president. I'm talking, of course, about Joe Biden's angry anti-American vaccine mandate push earlier today. This is an unprecedented uh, assumption of federal uh, mandate uh, authority that really disrupts and divides the country. Now Joe Biden's threatening the unvaccinated more than he's threatening the Taliban. You would expect words like that from the president, maybe of communist China or of North Korea, but you don't expect words like that coming out of the mouth uh, of the president of the United States. Okay, you don't need to say communist China every time. It's like referring to Boston as racist Boston. Like, we know, dude. First of all, the mandate doesn't apply to everyone. It's mostly for federal workers, federal contractors, and employees of large businesses. And if you work for a private business and you still don't want to get the shot, you don't even have to. You can just undergo weekly testing instead. And it's so much easier than the other tests you have to take at work, pretending you're happy. And before you dipshits in tricorn hats you bought at Spirit of Halloween say anything, legal experts say Biden's mandates are well within his constitutional power. Sorry. Biden's move is grounded in powers granted to him by Congress and the Supreme Court itself has twice upheld state or local vaccine mandates in the past. Seriously, even f George Washington required his troops to get vaccinated. And that was back when God was still real. Also, the pure hypocrisy on display from Republicans who slam the mandates one minute and then tout the benefit of vaccines the next. If a government agency in the state of Florida uh, forces uh, a vaccine as a condition to employment, that violates Florida law. The vaccines protect you, get vaccinated, and then live your life as if you're protected. And I can tell you, Nebraska will push back, fight back with any tool we can find against this huge and stunning overreach of federal power. This is how we get through the pandemic. By getting vaccines, we develop the antibodies that when enough people have those antibodies, the virus won't be able to transmit anymore. I think it's just political theater, and I'm not for mandates. If you haven't been vaccinated regarding the COVID problem, you need to get vaccinated. It's kind of like when Nickelodeon told kids to stay off drugs while also playing Rocco's Modern Life for three hours a day. And that itself was just a gateway drug to cat dog. And while we're on the subject of abominations of nature, it's funny GOP leaders are banning vaccine mandates considering they never gave a shit about the ones their states already had for decades, like the shots kids have to get before attending school. Because, not to get too real, in all seriousness, my generation should be the last to have a friend die of the cooties. May you circle, circle, dot, dot in heaven. This isn't complicated. Vaccines save lives and the majority of Americans support mandates. Republicans need to be honest. They are not scared of the vaccine and they're not scared of mandates that have centuries long precedent. They're only scared of one thing, the hate filled conspiracy loving base they've cultivated. But you know what? It's their f problem. They need to court voters who cosplay as caveman Vikings, not ours. The rest of us just wanna buy our f fruit in peace. Get the goddamn shot. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to hear more from Full Frontal, like and subscribe. If you'd like to hear some opinions from a man in a lifted truck, leave YouTube on autoplay.